Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in. Welcome in to the Bama Standard Post Game Show. Let's go ahead and get things fired up. 66 to 10 victory over Chattanooga. Before we get started, we are brought to you by Workspace Solutions. If your business needs a digital presence or a full fledged marketing team, they are the dudes you want on your team calling the plays. So hop on over to Workspace Pros dot com so they can get you set up live chat do your thing let's get rowdy we saw a lot of great things especially for the future today hit that like button hit that subscribe button if you are watching the replay show us some love in the comment section down below i am joined as always by an all-star panel representing each of the shows we have on this network that you love so dearly let's start on the top section here the man, the myth, the legend, the better looking, as he says, James brother, Chris James from the final whistle. What's up, guys? Ready to get it going. Great, great game today. And then next to him, a two time yeah. national champion, two time SEC champion, and one of the baddest dudes to ever be on the offensive line, the Chris Owens. Hey, guys. Holiday season. Go get you some. <laughs> We're asking for a sponsor. Good looking out there, Chris. Just below him, he's definitely not soft-spoken, and he'll tell you exactly what's on your mind, and he won't apologize for it later because he just ain't that kind of guy. Lucian, welcome in, sir. What's happening, y'all? Roll Tide. I enjoyed what I saw today. Young, young, the future is very bright around here, and that's scary for the rest of the nation. I love it. I love it all. And, folks, if you didn't know, he represents the final whistle as well. Last but not least, the queen of the Obama Standard Network has one of the best shows out there, the Crimson Dynasty, C.C. Payne. What's going on, C.C.? Look, everything's going on, right? What's about to go on is Atlanta. We about to do some business (laughs) out here. So, look, just a couple weeks away. (laughs) Man, as hype yeah. as you are, I'm surprised you're not already outside the Mercedes Benz Dome or whatever. <laughs> look, we were out. We were, look, we were out there last night, and I'm just like, yeah, it's just a couple more weeks, man. Just a couple. That's more passion, weeks. right there. Tailgating yeah. two weeks ahead of time. I like that. Well, I mean, we just got to set, you know, because they got to twist it out here. They think it's a Georgia home game. No, it's Alabama because we've been that. We've been out here. We've been coming out here consistently, right? So. Oh. And, and and another thing, like. We kind of took it for granted for so many years from, from going back to back so many years. So the attendance kind of, you know, spiraled down a little bit as far as Bama fans. But this year, man, it's going to be a sea of crimson. I, I expect mm-hmm. Atlanta to have like a lot of Bama Nation there this year. Mm. According to Georgia fans, they'll all be there to see Carson Beck carve up our secondary. <laughs> <laughs> Delusion is a horrible thing, folks. So is mental health. <laughs> But we'll get into that as the days and weeks progress. But right now, we're here to talk about Alabama versus UT Chattanooga. Of course, going in, we didn't feel like it was going to be any type of a tight contest to get our anxiety up, although we had moments within the game that kind of got us fired up just a little bit that we will highlight throughout this wonderful episode. But let's go ahead and get things rolling. I'm sure we all had some questions going in as far as what we needed to see. They weren't hard questions because we're not playing an LSU. We're not playing a Georgia. We're not playing an Auburn, so on and so forth. But they're valid questions nonetheless. And the second part to that is, were they answered the way that we wanted them to be answered? Were we satisfied? Chris James, you are one of the most well-spoken dudes out there. Let's start with you. Then we'll go to Chris Owens, down to Lushan. And see, she will bring all this home. Okay. Um, yes, I think all of my questions were answered today. The um, the main thing going in, I was wondering about uh, how were we going to uh, respond to the Kentucky win? Um, were we going to come out flat? Were we going to, you know, like we've done in previous years, not every year, but previous years um, in that game before Auburn. So to see us come out and just dominate from 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 whistle to whistle, um, it, it, it was it, it was great seeing that, and uh, we got a chance to see a glimpse of the future, which I'm so excited about. Um, it wasn't, and it, it did you couldn't tell a drop off, you know, from the second unit, uh, from the first unit to the second unit. Man, we're deep, we're um, we're we're a very deep team. Um, Jalen, um, Miro cont- continues to ascend, um, up my up my Heisman list, 
Um, I think that um, with two more good games against Auburn and Georgia, uh, he could he could possibly get a get a invite to New York. Um, the running game, it just everything. The old line protected well today um, because I mean, granted they're they're an FCS team, but they're an FCS playoff team, you know. So it wasn't like you know we were playing the the, the school of the blind, but um, you know they're they're <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're they're a well represented uh, FCS team. So to see that. Um, it, it was very encouraging, and I think that um, we found our punt returner guys. Um, <laughs> it only took us how many that weeks? Was, that was that was. But the thing about it though, that wasn't the first because we saw Terry on Arnold do it too earlier this year against South Florida. I think it was South Florida. So I mean, we have options. I was just wondering when that plug was going to be pulled. Um, but we 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 had put together a complete effort today, and I, I and I must say, I think that um that that call on Braswell was. I mean, what what was he supposed to do? I mean, the quarterback was – he wasn't expecting the quarterback to just stand there and, and take that lick. You know, usually they try to slide swipe you or something, but he just he stood is, there. He, it's like he just accepted death was meant for him at that moment, and he was going to go out remembered in that moment as a martyr for the UT Chattanooga <laughs> mocks. <laughs> yeah, that's what it seemed like because he – I mean, that dude took a lick, man. But um, but Justice Haynes, man, oh, like I, 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 and and I just, I just think that we have something up the sleeve, up our sleeve, for um down the road for him because I mean, man, he's a talent, man. He's too good to keep off the field. He's just too good to keep, to keep off the field, and um, and I mean, I'm I'm just satisfied. Malik Benson with the touchdown. Um, the only thing I, I just wish that Ty would have would have ran through the end zone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> But uh, but that's you know it's just just a complete team effort that was uh, I was glad to see now uh, we're we're rolling going into Auburn next week so that's a uh, that was a good thing today. Oh yeah, no doubt. Speaking of things up their sleeve, could we possibly have something up the sleeve of Tommy Reese for Jam Miller? I'm thinking something is in the works. You know, good favor says, you see, it's like baking a cake, right? Actually, no. We found out last week the offense is like a crockpot offense, according to Stephen M. Smith. And that's the, that's the visual we're going to go with. If you missed that explanation last week, I'll put that clip up tomorrow. Be sure and go back and watch that because you honestly can't get through the rest of the season without seeing that explanation of this offense. Chris Owens, what do you have for us, man? What do you want to see? Were your questions answered? Talk to us, man. Give us the expert advice. For me, I think the two biggest things I wanted to see – especially on offense, was A, could we put together drives that were a little bit longer. Um, early in the game, we had like an 11-play, six-minute drive, 90 yards. And that's the type of things we might need against some of the better teams down the road if we do need to play a little bit of keep away. And it was really good to see that. And then also, I wanted to see how Ty looked with the first unit, not just backups coming in with him. Mm -hmm. And like Chris said, there was no drop-off. Everything was fluid. Everything was going. Um, a few lapses on the defense here and there, but I think for the most part, the ones, twos, and even some of the threes came in and played well. So I was fairly satisfied against a team that, like you said, it made the playoffs. They're not a slouch, but Coach Saban mentioned it all throughout the week that you want to build momentum heading into a rivalry game. Lou Sean, you're hard to please. Did you come away slightly pleased today? Are you still wanting to see more? I would say that my questions were answered. Not thoroughly, but I'm happy about that because we got results without throwing the playbook at this team. Now, we did we did run a few new uh, situational plays, and we got a lot of young guys in, which is one of the key things I said that needed to happen today just because we don't want to see a repeat of our past of having players going down and not having these young kids ready to step up, which I think they played phenomenal today especially in the second half. I feel like our young guys really stepped up and they didn't let down that physicality was to the fourth quarter. I mean, that young defensive line, I mean, they, I mean, you could mm -hmm. say it was Chattanooga or not, but James Smith, Jordan Renaud, uh, well, Edric, uh, Hill. 90, Edric Hill. I mean, they, they were physical Sean Murphy. And I like uh, Jeremiah Alexander in the middle too. I mean, that's, I just said some talent right there, and they didn't even get to play this season. Like it's, 
it is scary. And these dudes are getting more experience, which is the most important thing. We have the more experience we have. I mean, just think about it right now. Our inside linebacker room is very inexperienced. And all the talent we have just with those few reps and the reps they're going to get when we, you know, take care of business against Auburn and them Bulldogs here in a couple weeks, it's just going to pay dividends to the future. I am very, very happy with what I saw from uh, Kevin Steele and also Tommy Reese. They got a little bit eccentric with their play formations, but also didn't show too much at the same time because everybody in Crimson played hard today, and I love it. So that's what I got. Yes, Chris, before CC goes. Um, if you uh, tune in, man, uh, Michigan and Maryland, uh, Maryland has the ball down by five with six minutes to go in the game. Everybody thought that that was a blowout. Uh, Maryland's hanging in there with a chance to win this game and yep. shake up some things. My god, Loxy's sending us a favor. I'm, I'm just glad to see that Talia is still upright and alive. I don't know if you had a chance to see the the hit that he suffered earlier, which should have been called targeting, but was not. Mm-hmm. If we want to start talk, comparing about calls of what should and should not be targeting, there is definitely a case for what should be. If you go back and watch that, see, she not last, but not least bring this point home. What did you have going in? And were you satisfied? Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm never, hundred percent satisfied when it comes to Alabama. Cause I'll always know that there's more that we can do. Um, but I did have three questions. So my first question was, were we going to come out and score early, get a good lead early? Cause sometimes you'll see with like, you know, these out of conference games or, you know, uh, just whatever the case may be, you'll see a team like Alabama kind of start a little slower just because they kind of know in the back of their minds, you know, we'll still come out with a W. So I wanted us to start scoring early just so that we could pull Milrow out and then get Simpson in. A second question that I had was, what was we going to, were we going to see Dylan Lonergan? Because mm. I was curious after Ty Simpson, I already felt like we were going to see three quarterbacks, but I wanted to know who that third quarterback was going to be. Was it going to be like Tyler Buckner or Eli? Didn't really think Eli, but I was glad to see that it was Dylan. So, and, and we saw, you know, I mean, I, I'm a hundred percent on board with Dylan. I just think he needs more time out there just like Ty. Uh, but my third question was, what were, what were we going to see with the young guys? I, like, I really wanted to see, of course, like the Justice Haynes, but then some of like the Sean Murphy's, you know, Jeremiah Alexander's. I wanted to see what they were going to do and if they were going to be able to, you know, really get some points on the board and really make an impact uh, because we know that these type of games work best for them so that when you do have the games like, uh, you know, we play Auburn or, you know, these uh, conference games, we want them to feel comfortable. Um I'm going to end by saying this, though, on this talking point. We really shouldn't be surprised by Caleb Downs on that punt return because we have to remember that when he was in high school, he played safety and he played wide receiver. So, you know, you kind of get the best of both sides. You know, he's good with his hands, but I think, you know, also just just, uh, his awareness on the field. You know, I think he's like, if we really want to talk about cooking in that pot, you know, I mean, I think he's, he's that guy. Hey, you left out a key component, that spin move. That was a thing of beauty. It's like he pushed the, yeah. cir- the yeah. circle button and man, that was nice. But why did we have to wait until Chattanooga to see what that young man could have been doing the entire year? And we're lucky Chattanooga didn't recover that ball. We're just lucky. Yeah, yeah. That, without question. But uh, I think our defense would have been up for the task. But It was amazing seeing what we were able to do as a rushing team today. 315 yards on 33 carries. The only slacker that was under uh, eight yards per carry was Dylan Lonergan. Fast five yards per carry. Man, I tell you what, he needs to get a lesson in toughness. No, I'm just kidding. I was impressed with this toughness. He did lower his shoulder and got a first down. So, you don't really expect that out of a freshman. But then again, he's built different being from 7A Georgia football. But yeah, my question mainly was, were we going to come out and do what we needed to do to get the starters out early? If they're there longer than they should be, there's a problem. There wasn't a problem. I think we took all of four plays to score in the first drive, five plays the next drive. It was just a route. The guys understood the assignment, and I believe they answered your question, Shishi, on your show earlier this week. Would they still have that fire 
going into a lesser opponent where you and, and Chris Owens and Coach Smook uh, debated that. Now, they showed up. They understand that th there is no drop-off. There is no time for drop-off. And the playoff committee, they're looking at every single move we make and looking for every single opportunity to discredit what we have. So I think we're continuing to make a strong case for what we have or expects to be a long playoff run. Let's move on to our next topic, you know, turning points of the game. Of course, I mean, it's, it's Chattanooga, right? But there are some really great things we saw. I, I was really impressed with what Ty Simpson did in terms of wheels. He needs to secure the ball going across the goal line, but nonetheless, that was pretty impressive to see him take that 89-yard scamper down the sideline into the end zone. He dropped it, but it gave Richard Young his first touchdown of his career, so can't be too upset about that. But, guys, what stood out to you as a turning point, not necessarily for the game, but maybe a look to the future to where, hey, if we need a big moment, this guy is going to provide that moment for us when it means the most. Let's start with Sushi, then go to Lushan, Chris, and then Chris. Yeah, my uh, I would say it was Christian Story's interception. You know, Christian Story is a guy that we haven't really heard his name a whole lot per se, but he, I mean, he's been showing up this game and even when we played Kentucky last week as well. Now, I know that, you know, him getting that time on the field has a lot to do with maybe some injuries, uh, but at the same time, you know, he he's really showing up. And I think that's why we saw, you know, that camaraderie for him uh, on the sideline when he got back to the sideline. So I would say for me, that was a turning point. I know that was kind of early in the game, uh, but it was still a turning point. And another, uh, was uh, Jam Miller. You know, I talk about him a lot, but one of his explosive runs that he had, you know, it was just... It, it just kept making me think like, you know, you have these guys out here who, you know, highly recruited out of high school. And of course, it takes some time to adjust, but being able to just see them get out there. And even if it's not a touchdown to get those type of positive yards, it that's what helps to set you up for, you know, the touchdown. So I would definitely say the Christian story uh, interception. That's a good one. I'm glad that you brought that to the table here. Lou, Sean, what do you who, what did you have? What stood out to you as a turning point? Not necessarily for the game, but. Down the road against maybe an Auburn or Georgia, you know this dude may step up and get the job done that we need done. I saw James Smith. I've seen 47 hop around on the sidelines all season, and I saw today something that I haven't seen from a backup defensive lineman at Alabama, and he threw that offensive tackle during that play he might not have made that play but he made room for a couple other people to make plays and he was about it and he led that second to third i'd probably he got in a little bit on the second unit but once that third unit came in all freshmen they they kept that physicality and, and to me when i see big heavies up front winning their battles and getting physical like that that to me says the future is going to be bright and at the same time on the back end I saw a lot of young DBs doing their thing on the backside. I saw Jake Pope in there getting physical. Des Ricks was in there shutting it down. It was just, you know, it it was it was good to see. It was just good to see a a nice healthy rotation of aggressive young players that were out there playing for Alabama, not on the name of their back, like we've seen in the past from our young kids. So, mm. Chris Owens, what do you got? Tell me your turning point of the game or guys that are going to serve well down the road. Yeah, so I also had the turning point of K-Story's interception. I thought that was really big for him. But I think somebody that's going to help us down the road, um, we've been talking about him a lot, is Devontae Smith. I saw him get in. He looked really good out there. He looked fast. He looked like he hadn't missed a beat. And just knowing how that guy practices and knowing the physicality that he can bring to the back end, especially if we do have injuries along the way, um, it made me feel really good that he can fill in and there will be no drop off. Chris James, before we go to our newly arrived Ty Hayes, All right. what you got, man? You guys remember when we were trying to figure out who would be that next safety to play alongside alongside Downs next year? Well, we had the answer. <laughs> Devontae Smith. I mean, that guy was flying around, man. And um, he, he played with reckless abandonment today. 
And to see that, knowing that you have that coming back next year, along with Trey Amos and uh, Earl Little Jr. and a guy like Antonio Kite, it's going to be a battle for the corner opposite Amos next year um, between uh, Kite, um, Ricks, uh, Dez Ricks, and uh, Jaleel Hurley. It's going to be a battle, man, and, and those freshmen coming in. So, man, just just seeing how those young – Sean Murphy, man, making making – Making nice tackles and 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 like um, Lucian said, James Smith, man, like we have a plethora of young talent, man. We have a plethora of young talent, and to see um, McVeigh out there, right tackle, he got a penalty, but just to see that, you know, um, because we were trying to figure out who's going to play right tackle next year, and because I mean he had the size of a guard, of a big guard, but the but the guy could move. Um, maybe he'll you know lock down that right tackle spot next year, man. So just. Just seeing um, Dylan Lonergan, you know, just just slinging around uh, like he's been playing twelve games, you know. So um, the, the turning point was just when the young guys got in. I mean, I, we like we all expected Miro to the Miro to do his thing, and, and you know the first unit, but just to see the second unit come out and you couldn't tell those guys those guys didn't play like freshmen. They play like they've been on campus, you know, two to three years. So. And 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 the, the number one thing I hear all the time, well, when Saban retires, you guys are gonna go back to to Alabama. Oh, Al- I said, what's all oh, Alabama? And, you know, I mean, Alabama's won a championship in every decade except for what the the eighties, maybe was it was it the eighties? Only 80s. decade that, that Bama didn't win the national championship in, uh, in fifties and 80s, something like that. But eighties, you know. So I mean, I said, what is old Alabama? I mean, because we've always been winners, but. If you think that Bama's just going to fall off, even if Coach Saban was retired, which isn't going to be in the next no time soon, I mean, he even said it himself. So just to see that future, man, um, those guys um, that we're losing and seeing guys step up, um, it was it was it was a thing of beauty today. Um, so I'm just excited. I'm excited that Jason Bernard is giving us a little bit of cash here. Dollar ninety nine. Can we give Jam Miller his flowers? Oh, without a doubt. We've been doing it all year. We just are waiting for his moment to erupt. And for me, the turning point is just seeing the plethora of running backs get to shine on a big stage. We knew it was there, but we really got to see it in motion. And it's going to be a problem for Auburn, for Georgia, and then for whoever we tangle with in the playoffs. Really excited to see what these guys – I was excited to see Roy Dell do his thing. My gosh, I hope that uh, Aflac provides ankle insurance for defenders because he certainly caused premiums to go up earlier today. Those jump cuts were nasty, but, God, things you love to see. Ty Hayes, hey. welcome in to the show. We couldn't have a show without you. I know that Blades is locked up somewhere, so we won't ask him to give his thoughts, but you're here. You kind of had an opportunity to listen to all this. So what's your turning point or turning points of this game or more so who showed you something to give us a hint of a secure future when we lock horns with Auburn, Georgia, and possibly more? Yeah, so I think there's a lot to break down. First and foremost, my turning point in this game didn't actually occur in this game. My turning point in this game occurred weeks ago. Um, And it wasn't a turning point in any one game. It was a turning point in the season. And that was the way the mentality of the team, the ferocity of the team, everything switched. I think we started to see this during the Ole Miss game. And I think it went to a totally different level against A&M. And ever since then, there really hasn't been a looking back. I know someone in chat can give me Arkansas. Arkansas has played everybody tough, right? They've been a bad team this year, but they have been a tricky bad team. And they continually do it. So, I just look, guys, I mean, this Alabama team continues to ascend. The development we have seen during so many aspects of this team, offensive line, which continues to improve. We talk about it all the time. Watching Proctor develop has been a lot of fun. You started to see him struggle early. Then he started picking up some of the more complex things. And now, I mean, the future looks really bright with him. I think Alabama has the best guard combination in the nation with 77 and 52. Uh, You name me two better guards than that, and they have to be sensational. But Jalen Milrow, the ability he has to continue growing as a passer, as a leader, as a quarterback, it's just so much fun to watch. In terms of a player who I think emerged and we need to continue looking out for, you guys already kind of talked about one of them, um, number 47. The other one is Jam Miller. We talked about this in our group chat. Jace is one of those backs where some NFL team is going to draft him and then literally tell 
all of their staff behind the scenes that they just hit the lottery, that they mm. just got a guy at a steal. The only reason I say a steal, ladies and gentlemen, is because we know how the NFL undervalues the running back position. It is an unfortunate truth, but the NFL and the people in these draft rooms do anything they can to undervalue running backs to try and get them later than earlier. I mean, just look at the contract negotiations. It is always wild. I have a buddy who played from UNT in the NFL and uh, just listening to him try and talk about his contract negotiations and the woes he has with it. It sucks, man. But some team is going to get Jace McClellan and they are going to be over the moon because he does everything at a high level. But that also means you have guys like Roy Dell, Jam Miller. They're almost the lightning to his thunder. I want to see more Jam Miller because I think this running back room is fantastic. But I think there's a lot to be excited about, some stuff that needs to clean up, specifically inside linebacker. But, you know, I think that comes with having uh, arguably the best inside linebacker in the nation out. We have a super chat. I can't talk. Super chat. It's from J.D. Long. Nine ninety nine. Shout out to Jalen Milrow, Ty Simpson, and Roydell Williams. Glad to see Burton back in at wide receiver. And what's the status of Ja'Cory Brooks? He was the Iron Bowl hero. Does anyone have an answer to the missing he's, case he that is Ja'Cory? I saw him in the sling. I heard he was hurt. Yeah, he's he's hurt. hurt. He's, he's done there. for the season, isn't he? He may be, but I know he's, he, I he's been hurt the last few weeks. He had one of those surgical things that kind of keep your arm all the way out. So, Yeah, I think he's done for the like an elbow. Wow. I hate, I hate to see that, especially as we're reminded of his contribution just a few short years ago in the Iron Bowl. So I think this kind of ties into what we've already been talking about for our next topic. The areas of growth or improvement, you know, with – our main focus being on these second and third team players. Who were you impressed with the most, folks? Chris started out, Chris Owens, and then we'll jump over to Ty, then back to Chris Owens. Uh, sorry, Chris James start us out, and then go to Ty, Chris Owens, Cishi, then Lushan. Um, I think um, Sean Murphy, um, Kendra Blackshire, he still um, shows that he's very capable and very physical. Um, Sean Murphy, man, he's hungry to get on the field. I, I love what I saw from him. But the way that Devontae Smith played with reckless abandonment today, um, he he's our future, man. Like, he he is, like, I would call both – you know how you have thunder and lightning. I would call both of them thunder. <laughs> he and uh, Caleb Downs, he's like – he have both thunder. And they both are two-way guys. They can cover the pass. Um, they can come up and run support. And I mean, they can they can do it all, man. They they are complete safeties. Uh, um, Christian Story, just the um, the the continued growth of him. So um, just um, I, those just the back seven, man. Just just the back seven. Um, those guys. Um, I love what I saw. Okay, okay. Go ahead, Chris Owens. What you got? Yeah, for me, Chris touched on them earlier, but Miles McVay, he looked really good at right tackle. Specifically on one play, I saw him. He had a situation where he had two of the mo two of the most dangerous out of the three players, and he kind of, in offensive line terms, he sifted inside, and it was just a really good play. It made me understand that not just the starters, but the backup guys are understanding how they want to play as an offensive line. And then James Brockermeyer as well. He came in at center. He looked really good. Um, we never know. There was a point in our last championship run where we had an injury at center. And the man in the middle has to be able to run the offense and there can be no drop off. So I was really impressed with those two guys that came in. Hey, don't leave off Oluwas Alanin. He is so dang impressive and he seems to be getting it like right now. It is going to be quite a battle next year up front. Ty, what you got, brother? Who is impressing you out of this young group that we've seen today? Man, that's tough because there's a lot of different guys I could talk about. Um, I, I'm going to go with an easy answer, guys. And I'm going with the easy answer because Justin, Lushan, Chris, to y'all's credit, you will have heard me say this answer since day one. This has been my answer since the first show I did on here. Um, and it, it is a little bit, it's Caleb Downs. He's a true freshman. And I don't know if y'all knew this. He's before this game, he was the third highest graded safety in all of college football as a true freshman. And he was on the heels 
of number one and number two. There was less than a two-point di- differentiation between he and the number one and number two guys. Caleb Downs is going to be not only the best safety in the nation, but the best football player in the nation before too long book it. Wow. CC, who are you impressed with? I would say uh, three guys. So one guy from the defensive side, Devontae Smith, of course. Um, I think us starting this season without him, it kind of shook things up. To me, I would actually say that, you know, and this is me, you know, I don't know if people would agree, but if we had him in our game against Texas, that could have made some some difference. I think that he was ready to play, but of course that injury and the type of injury that it was, I was kind of thinking that we may not have seen him until the playoffs, but I'm glad that we did see him today. And I think it's good to kind of get him back out there and get him, you know, in the routine of things. But on the offensive side, two guys. So I would say Robbie Oots on that touchdown today. <laughs> You know, because we've seen him out there blocking a lot, but not really seeing him as far as getting his hands on the ball. So I was happy to see that for him. And I'm hoping that we see that a little more. Um, So Robbie Oots and then also, uh, of course, Danny Lewis Jr., true freshman. um, You know, it was good to see him as well. So I would say uh, those guys in particular um, and maybe Malik Benson. You know, he had he had a pretty good, you know, uh, game today. I think that we expected more from him starting the season. And maybe it was more so because of all the like the hoorah that we were hearing about him. But you know, I think he showed up and hopefully we'll see him show up a little more. Mm-hmm. Lucian, you've been quiet over there, which is highly unusual. Where did you see some growth? Who were you impressed with? I'm going to hit on one position group right now, which uh, everybody had a question mark about this room fan wise and around the country. And I'm going to say it's our quarterback room. From what we saw earlier in the season to what we just saw today, we saw three young men have commanding presence and be able to deal the ball out efficiently, effectively, and most importantly, turnover free. And I think that right there spells absolute panic in teams trying to defend us because you really don't know what you're going to see from our offense. And that's scary because you've already seen, we've already seen our defense step up. And on the defensive side, like I already said it, I'm I'm rocking with it. I'm rocking with James Smith. That's my guy. Just because a couple other young dudes, uh, Earl Little was out today, but James Smith, I'm going to tell you something. I see Jonathan Allen in that dude's eye. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if y'all remember when he first came on the scene, Jonathan Allen uh, had a had a little short. He said, uh, "Alabama do," and I see that Alabama do a lot in James Smith, and not just him. I see it in a lot of young guys. We didn't even get to see today, and I think that should even scare people. We didn't even see Keon Keeley, Quay Russo, or Yonze Pierre, or some of them other dudes. We got to see Jeremiah Alexander out there in the middle, which I was excited about because that dude is just a football player, and. Uh, Oh, shout out to Don Parker. Yeah, it's all burn hate week. I mean, <laughs> we ain't. Uh, I hate orange. Everybody already knows that in this <laughs> on this panel. I hate. I hate that color. But, Just, uh, yes, sir. All right, go ahead, go ahead. Sean. Finish up. Um, and uh, man, the the young running backs. Like, I know everybody like on Justice Haynes, and I trust me, I love the kid too. But what I seen from Richard Young on a curse, Vansville. Caleb Williams, you gotta that. that, <laughs> that <laughs> we went to a commercial break without going. <laughs> uh, with, with, Finishing with that, up <laughs> with that with that physical with that physical just shoulder at the end to get into that end zone. It's like, listen, our running back room is physical, and it's all throughout. And honestly. To me, I think our young guys are actually more physical than the older two guys. Because if you look at how Jam put his shoulder down and how Justice put his shoulder down and how we saw Richard Young put his shoulder down, I'm like, listen, I mean, Tommy Reese in the future just has so many just things that we haven't even seen. And you know what? I think that's all part of what Nick Saban calls the process. Or, because or you're not going to offense. 
Uh, no, nah, I, nah, I, I, ain't, I ain't hearing that. I, I, I'm here about the saving process because the process doesn't happen in a day. It don't happen in 10 weeks. The process happens the whole season. And that's what Saban's message is. We're not a finished product week one. We're not a finished product week two. We're not even a finished product right now. And the fact that we're still growing and getting better all throughout the team from our starters all the way down to our backups and our young people, I'm telling you guys this. We are going to take care of what we need to take care of. CC, you're going to get her wish in Atlanta, and we're going to get that, and then we're going to get on to the playoffs, and we're going to handle it don't, it don't stop in Atlanta. I'm, look, Atlanta to Houston. Like, just let's oh, do some time travel. Look, huh? Hey, you I'm should already put a room in Houston. <laughs> yeah, my, my yeah, yes. booked. I booked that months ago. <laughs> it, hey, the, the fact that we have all these young support pieces around our stars, because if you look around everybody else in the country, it's like, OK, they have this. But like you're looking at a playoff committee, right? You're looking at the full team performance. OK, if one player goes down, that can mean their season. If this player goes down, that can mean their season. That's not the case in Alabama football. Yeah, We have so many dudes ready to step up and are thirsty. They're salivating at the gums to just get out there and just hit somebody. And that right there spells success because guess what? You ain't going to get a let off when somebody goes out. No doubt. And that's kind of what I want to see before Chris gets this from Ty Simpson. Has he progressed since week two? If we are in a dire situation, would he be able to pick up the reins and we don't skip a beat? Well, the answer was obvious today and the time that he showed us was it not only skipped a beat, but it probably picked up some intensity. Really excited to see what he can bring to the table and what it meant for our wide receivers who got involved. Awesome seeing Kendrick Law get that deep throw. He didn't get in the touchdown, but my gosh, I love seeing him fight for the end zone. It just kind of goes to show you what he can do and the other wide receivers can do with a quarterback like Ty. Chris, I know that you're chomping at the bit. What did you have for us? No, it was it was just an update. First play of the game, Georgia, Tennessee, Tennessee Houses, 75 yards on a the run. They're up seven then on Georgia right now. Well, that's this hope. This hope they don't peak there. <laughs> All right. So we've got an opportunity to go over this game. Now we need to start looking ahead. And next week is the Iron Bowl. And as we always do with each postgame show, we talk about where does Alabama go from here. So we're going to touch lightly on this Iron Bowl. But then I also want to talk about how the playoff committee is going to view us this coming Tuesday. Playing in Jordan Hare is one of the most difficult and weird places to play. There's some kind of voodoo witchcraft going on there. I've heard the rumor that the stadium is on top of an Indian burial ground which probably would explain some of the weird stuff we've seen. But nobody would know that or understand that better than Chris Owens because he was there firsthand. We were supposed to blow Auburn out of the water, 30 or 40 points, but that's not how it played out. It ended up being a classic a Daniel Moore type of painting kind of day. So I'm going to let Chris Owens start out with this. Where does Alabama go from here? What do you expect from this trip to Auburn? Does it compare to what you experienced and then we'll go down to Lushan, CC, Ty, then back to Chris James. I, I hate that place, first off. I hate everything <laughs> about it. Their colors, their fans, the stupid I, – I hate everything about it. The stupid scoreboard that lights up and stu- like crazy bright, I hate it. But I think this trip compares more so to my last trip where our backs are against the wall. And even though we've already secured our spot in Atlanta – we're kind of still in that one game playoff mode mentality. And when you get to the iron bowl, you pretty much throw everything else out for the rest of the season. Everything's about this one week. And I think Coach Saban will have that engraved in the players' minds, understanding that we did sneak away last time. But before then we had lost two of our last like three trips down there. It's a very weird, very hard place to play. Um, you have to keep your emotions in check, but I think, the maturity and the leadership that we've developed over the season, that's really going to come into play. Um, and the young guys that may have built some momentum this week, like someone mentioned earlier, Ja'Cory Brooks was one of those young guys that ended up being a hero for us in that game. And they may come to the forefront. So it's a weird game. It always is highly competitive no matter what the records are. But 
I think we'll be focused and we'll be ready to go. Very well said. Very well said. Lushan, go ahead and take the baton here. Let's look ahead to Auburn, man. Your thoughts. Where do we go from here? Is it going to be tough? Uh, Honestly, I don't think it's going to be tough. I am 1,000% in trust with our coordinators. We didn't have Kevin Steele the last time, you know, we, we, we went about playing this game at this, as Chris alluded to, cursed, ugly, smelly, just putrid looking, just absolutely disgusting of a stadium. I don't even, I can't, I'm sorry. But Kevin Steele has a mind and he has the athletes. And most importantly, they're all on the same page. So I don't see... Auburn being able to get a step ahead of us in any phase of the game and especially how Tommy Reese is calling plays and how our offense is on the same page and most importantly how our offensive line has finally gelled I think this is going to be a physical game no doubt but I feel like it's going to be us imposing our will for as Nick Saban likes to call 60 minutes four quarters and that's what I expect to see next weekend Okay, fair enough. See, she, how do you feel about this one? You know, going back a few weeks, you could say the same thing when Georgia went over to Jordan Hare. There shouldn't have been any kind of chance that they, that Auburn hang around, but they made the game to the very end. What have you seen from us that says, you know what, it's going to be a different story going into this contest? The main thing that I've seen is that we've found our identity. I think the last couple of years that we've played, you know, Auburn, even if it was at home, when we had, you know, Booth O'Brien, a.k.a. Bill O'Brien and Pete Golden, is that we just didn't have our, you know, we didn't have our identity established. I mean, that's your last regular season game. I see you laughing, Chris Owens. That's our last regular season game. You cannot still not have your identity at that point. How do you expect to go into a conference championship game or the playoffs? And so that's something that I think um, that's different, you know, this time around is that we, we, we've established our identity. You know, our, our starting quarterback has that confidence. Of course, he's not Bryce Young, but that doesn't make him any worse or any better. He just has a different skill set. And now Tommy Reese knows how to, you know, highlight those strengths and then kind of, I, I, I feel like, like because of the type of quarterbacks that we've had over the last few years, we had a certain expectation where maybe we got a little spoiled. And I think that, you know, having someone like Jalen Milrow, where we get to see him progress throughout literally week by week, you know, that's literally what you want to see. And so I think just having Jalen Milrow with the confidence and the poise that he has now, along with the new coordinators, because our defense, you know, that. Kevin still he has full on trust in them and I feel like Tommy Reese is there now as well and so I just think with the new coaching having our identity established and having a starting quarterback with the type of confidence that Milrow has honestly if we can get out there and score pretty early I, I could see at least a 14 to 21 point difference if not more and that's my take. I like that. We got a couple of super chats for Ty takes over. Gavin Kane a dollar ninety nine bros Tennessee scored First drive against Georgia. Don Parker with $2, UGA versus Rocket Flop. I wish both teams could lose. <laughs> well, yeah, just let me comment on that really, really quickly. Go I ahead. do think that um, just seeing how the playoff committee, their biases, I think it's been pretty evident over the years, but even this season in particular, I do think that, and I said it during the Crimson Dynasty this week, I think that what they're going to do, they're going to wait and see how we play Auburn. And at that point, that's when we'll move up to that number five-ish, number six spot. But I do think that we need Georgia to win win this game tonight we we want them mm -hmm. to still be number one so yeah we want to see a good game but we do not want to i mean it'd be different if tennessee was number three or number yeah. four you know right. celebrate all you want and we can sit here and laugh you know but at the same time we have to think about we have to have foresight and think about what what sets us up in the best position and that's going to be georgia coming out beating tennessee and beating them convincingly you know yeah. that that won't hurt us the least bit oh well, i agree i think Beating a number one Georgia carries greater magnitude than saying if they drop this game where they drop probably five or six spots, maybe even out of the top ten, and then us going in and beating them doesn't carry quite the kind of weight you'd want to see to 
justify being moved ahead of, say, a Texas or Oregon if Oregon should win out. Ty, looking ahead to Auburn, if you want to touch on the, the question that uh, I asked she because Auburn did find some kind of magic in their hats when Georgia came to town, and they were able to corral the dogs somewhat until – <laughs> the superhuman tight end Brock Bowers just decided to say, you know what, F this, <laughs> we're going to take this one home. But, yeah, let's go ahead and look at that, man. Yeah, so Auburn is a team, guys, that I think is playing better than a lot of people anticipated. And if that catches you off guard, look at who they've lost to. Uh, off the top of my head, if I'm not mistaken, their four losses are Old Miss, Georgia, A&M, and LSU. Um, so, by and large, good teams they've lost to. I didn't think that they would be this competent in Freeze's first year because they had quarterback woes. They had so much happen. They had a damn coup occur on that campus. I don't know if y'all keep up with coups. Ask Myanmar how that's going right now. Not well. That's why Blaze isn't here right now because he tried to take advantage of that situation and start another coup. That's neither here nor there. <laughs> Auburn is a dangerous team. Let's get one thing understood. Alabama has fallen in that stadium several times. They've fallen in that stadium with teams that we thought were as close to impenetrable as Alabama has fielded. And on top of that, Hugh Freeze, how many other coaches have can be able to honestly say they beat Nick Saban more than once? Hugh Freeze has that. Jordan Hare has that. That's a perfect recipe, which is why Alabama has got to be on their P's and Q's. That's why I was largely so excited to see how they played today. Would they sleepwalk past Chattanooga looking ahead to Auburn? The answer was an emphatic no, which leads me to believe the answer will be an emphatic no next week. Alabama's the far more talented team. I think at every level, Alabama is better. They're better offensively. They're better defensively. I think they're better on special teams. But Jordan Hare is cursed. I don't know what it's cursed with. I mean, by all means, if I knew, I'd go solve it. I will go burn Sage before the game, but it's not going to work. <laughs> That stadium is absolutely cursed. It doesn't matter if you're Alabama. It doesn't matter if you're Georgia. They get away with murder in that stadium, and I just don't get it. I think Alabama is going to make an example out of Auburn, though, because Auburn is playing better right now. And I think Alabama is going to exit that game having beaten them by at least 14 points and I don't think that the scoreboard is going to reflect what the game really says. In my opinion, the scoreboard will show a closer game. But if you watched it, I think you're going to see a pissed off Alabama team take some souls. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, uh, I don't know how we can move forward past that. Um, let's just go ahead and end the show. <laughs> No, this this talk a little bit as a second part to the question, the playoff committee. What mm. do they see from us today that's going to cause them maybe to move us up a little bit as we rightfully should be? Uh, you know, got you know, we don't know what's going to happen tonight when Oregon State takes on Washington or Neil. Texas or Texas is going to take on Iowa State, which that could be a tricky game for Texas right now, who's kind of reeling after losing the run back for the year. But let's talk about the playoff committee. Do we still sit at number eight, or does Alabama start to move a little bit? Chris, since you're anxious right now, let's go to you. Then. I, want, I, want to, I, want, I want to come in on the Auburn thing first. Voodoo won't save them this time. Voodoo is not going to save them. You want to see a pissed-off Bama team? Think about all the, the past pissed-off Bama teams that went into Jordan Hare. Um, 2011, um, 2015 with Derrick Henry, like – Teams with, with Bama teams that 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 are playing to prove something rather than Bama teams playing not to lose tend to do well in Jordan Hare. Think about it. Past teams, 2009, we were undefeated in there, trying not to lose. We we escaped. Uh, 2013, we were playing not to lose. We lost by a kick six. 2017, um, with Jalen Hurts, we were playing not to lose. Um, we were undefeated and lost. Well, still somehow managed to win the championship that year. You know, so the teams that go in with a chip on their shoulder, those are the teams that tend to to, to go into Jordan Hare and kick their teeth out. Because when I played 2001, um, we kept Auburn. When we went in Jordan Hare, we kept Auburn out of the SEC championship. We went in there with Frank Johnny with a chip with something to prove, and we uh, killed their chances of going to the SEC championship that year. So it's like 
Bama teams with with, with the chip, man, they, they tend to perform well. Um, that, that's what I wanted to say. And tonight, I got Washington going down to Oregon State. I have Washington going down, and I have Texas playing a a, a, a game that – a messy game against Iowa State. I don't think they're going to go in there and just dominate Iowa State. I think Iowa State – because they I think they've lost four out of the last five times they've been to, to Iowa State. So I think Iowa State has something to say about it tonight. And my prediction is Bama will move up a couple of spots in Tuesday's poll. Mm, okay. Okay. Yeah. Ames, Iowa is a hard place to play. Chris, touch on this subject, man. Let us know. Playoff committee. Do they give us a break finally, or do they continue to keep us at number eight pissed off and motivated by that? Uh, I don't really think we get too much of a benefit. Me personally, I don't have either of those teams losing. I don't have them winning great games either, but I do think Washington and Texas do find a way to win. I think it will just kind of be standard issue until we finally win the SEC championship, which at that point you can't deny us. They'll probably have to do some explaining. I think there was a point made earlier that if Florida State were to somehow finish undefeated and we finish with one loss as SEC champions, um, we should get the nod over them. So regardless of what the rest of the country does, I think we're going to find our way in just because it'll be at, what, 11 straight wins or something like that when we win the SEC championship game. That's just a tough team to keep out who's playing as well as we are and SEC champions, hopefully beating the number one team if they don't go on to lose. Um, but as far as this week, I don't know if there'll be too much movement. Lucian. I don't want to dial it back, but I got to dial it back a little bit to the whole Auburn thing. The most important thing about us going into that stadium is that we have a lot of young players that have played on big stages since they were like 12 years old. And that to me alleviates the whole voodoo of whatever they do down in Auburn, the War Eagle, the Tigers, how many animals. I don't care if they have the whole animal kingdom down there. It ain't going to matter because these kids don't have a memory and they most importantly don't care. They're going to perform at the highest level because most importantly, they have a destiny to achieve here. They have goals because they don't have a national championship to ride the coattails on. They're trying to achieve their own place in history. And that in itself is why we're going to erase them off the map next weekend. Okay. Now the playoffs the playoff committee. I feel like they're still probably going to hate on us another week. I feel like they're going to keep us at eight, which I like eight because Devonte Smith just gives me great feelings. And as long as we're there, I feel like, that's going to be another just pin in our side to just motivate us to want to come out and absolutely rip the hearts out of everything orange next weekend. And when that happens, I feel like next weekend the committee is going to have no choice. But like Ty alluded to, Auburn is not as bad as everyone truly thinks they are. They're not. If they were in a different conference, they'd have a completely different record. Let's just put it like that. If they were in, you know, the Pac-12 or the Big Ten, they would probably be in contention for a, a conference championship. And taking that into consideration, when Bama goes into that Curtis Stadium and takes care of business convincingly, that's when I feel like the committee will actually be like, okay. And then the next week when we take care, cut the head off the actual snake of college football right now, then they'll actually give us our flowers, and we will be in the college football playoff. Cici, you pay a lot of attention to the committee, and you've had a couple of things to say throughout the past several weeks to Boo Kerrigan. What are your thoughts come Tuesday? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know I've had a lot to say about this uh, so-called committee, and you know all that. But uh, I, I think it's, I think it's more. I don't even think it's black and white at this point. I think it's more scenario based, the situation, right? So I feel like if the teams that are ranked ahead of us right now, if they continue to win out, we're not going to have to 
it's not going to be a matter of us just beating Auburn. We're going to have to beat them convincingly. I said 14 mm -hmm. points or more. That's just what it's going to have to be. But even then, you're kind of still hoping and praying, you know. But I think that if by chance at least one, maybe two of the uh, teams ranked ahead of us tonight happen to lose or they play a very close game, that could help us. I, I think that will help us. We have to remember that next week, Ohio State and Michigan, people are still trying to hang their hats on that. They're both still ranked in the top four. So no matter what happens, I mean, you know, I think that they'll still, one of them will still be in good position if they continue to win out uh, considering today's games. But then also you have Florida State in Florida next week. Now, you know, Florida hasn't played the best, but at the same time, you know, Florida State, could they beat an Alabama? I, I really don't think so. And so I think that it's going to be based on what happens. You know, if the teams that are ranked ahead of us continue to win out, then we're going to have to win very convincingly against Auburn to really stake our claim. If by chance one, maybe two of those teams lose, we have a much better position to maybe end up at five or six, beat Georgia, hoping that they're still ranked number one, and then we're in there. Ta, close this up. I, I, uh, boy, where do I start with the committee? Do y'all want me to go on my major rant or do you want me to keep it? Short we love rants. Go, no, in on rant. so go on the rant. Here we go. Here's the thing, right? I used to do debate and the committee's own rankings don't make a lick of damn sense based on their own, like the, the own things they put forward. Let me, let me riddle this to everybody in the chat. And if anybody can answer me this, by all means, I'll buy you an Applebee's steak or something. Not that that's <laughs> great. I'm just broke. So riddle me this. You have your top four of, I don't actually care who's in the top three. It doesn't matter. Look at number four. That's Florida State. Florida State's key win here is LSU. Who's at number five? Washington. This is where it already stops making sense. Why? Because who they have at number six, Oregon. So you're telling me that the best one loss team in the country is Oregon. They're better than Texas. They're better than Alabama, even though all season long, they've played two teams with a winning record. Let me repeat that. All season long, they have played two teams with a winning record. One of them beat their ass. The other one they beat. Congratulations. You now have a ranked win. Welcome to the party. You're telling me that's better than Texas being the only team outside of Alabama vying for the college football playoffs with three ranked wins per the committee's own rankings? How the hell is Florida State ahead of Washington? If the committee values Oregon that much, then shouldn't it be a no-brainer that Washington is ahead of Florida State? And if they're saying, no, we really value the LSU win that Florida State did, then why the hell is Alabama being punished? I have a little bit of a theory. Alabama is not being punished as much for the loss against Texas as they are for the win against USF. Take that to the bank. Alabama is being punished more for beating USF than they are for being for losing to Texas. And I fully believe that because Oregon's not being punished for losing. Texas isn't being punished as much as Alabama for losing. Alabama is being punished for losing to USF or for beating USF. I apologize. I'm just, it's it's ridiculous. So what does Alabama have to do? They have to squash people. They have got to leave out no doubt. The committee is supposed to rank Bates on merits. When they talked about Oregon, they said, oh yeah, they beat that team in Utah that half of their team is away on a Mormon mission and the other half is injured. And outside of that, they have a good offense and a good defense. Congratulations. If you play Bishop Sycamore all year, yeah, your defense and offense is probably going to look pretty damn good. I, none of it makes any sense to me. Like none of this makes any damn sense to me. I, and look, I like Oregon. I actually think they're a pretty good football team. I've had a lot of fun watching them, but I also like facts. And the fact of the matter is there's no argument for Alabama to be at number eight. Alabama beat Ole Miss. They beat Tennessee. They, I, I, I just don't know. It makes no sense. <laughs> Pisses does me off. Doesn't that contradict the statement that a playoff committee has made saying that it's where you are right now as opposed to where you were in the beginning of the season? But yet, like you said, Ty, they are holding the USFL, USF contest against us. Like, we are supposed I to be eternally punished for, for that one hiccup where Jalen Milrow wasn't playing. We are still trying to figure things out. I guarantee you take this Alabama team against USF. It's going to be uh, 70 to nothing. Uh, and we probably run Texas out of the building. But that's neither here nor there. 
Lucian. N- not even that. Like you just look at like some of the teams they face. Like the committee is literally saying, like Ty alluded to, that some of the teams that they've played are dictating college football right now. Just to say so, Arizona State. You're telling me that Washington beating Arizona State 15 to 7 at home is a statement win when Arizona State has two wins on the season? Like, and then, but that Washington team that just beat that Arizona State team with two wins beat the Oregon team that is also ranked above an Alabama and a Texas team that actually play ranked football and actually play defenses that are, I don't know, in the top 100 ranked. So I, I like Ty said, said, I am just confused about what the committee is really getting at, or if they're just randomly going in there and selecting these teams because mathematically, statistically, and even mentally and common sensely, this doesn't make sense at all in any way, shape, or form. So they need to get it right in the next two weeks. And I have faith they will because I feel that the football gods and dominoes are going to fall like Chris James alluded to tonight. All right. All right. Now let's move on to the last part of our awesome show here where we pick the players of the game. I'm going to change it up just a little bit. Today was senior day. So what I'd like to do is for each person on this panel to Pete to pick a uh, senior player of the game because we need to honor them. This is their last day in the Crimson uniform in Bryant-Denny Stadium. So, Chris James, start us out, then go to Chris Owens, and Lushan, Cishi, and Ty. I'm going to give it to my boy Chris Braswell for still playing football. I mean, he got ejected for a hit that 10 years ago would have been just another down, play the next down. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they have – you may, it may as well be flag football now. So, for, in honor of him, you know, getting a sack taken away from him, salute my guy. <laughs> Chris Owens, who was your senior of the day? I'm going Justin e. Boygby. I think he's played really well down the stretch. He played well early on in this game. Um, and I think his ability down the road to stop the run and to be able to apply a pass rush pressure when we do need him, um, I think it's going to be huge. So, I'm going to give it to him. Lushan. I'm going to go with somebody that I think changed the attitude of a lot of our offensive players, and that's Jermaine Burton. I feel like his level of play and just attitude, and I'm going to stick my finger in your face while I make this catch, bled to our other wide receivers and honestly to our whole entire offense because our offense has an attitude right now. And that's why I'm giving my senior player of the game, Jermaine Burton. He's had that attitude all season, and I think he's going to keep it up for us. Cishi, your senior player yeah, of the game. I would say one on offense and one on defense. So defense would be Justin Boygby. I think coming off of that neck injury that he had last year, he would have been pivotal last year. But just the way that he's played consistently, because honestly, that's what I like to see. You can't be a part of Alabama and the standard that we like to talk about without showing up consistently. And that's what he's done. So definitely Justin Boygby from a defensive perspective. But then I would echo what Lucian just said as far as uh, Jermaine Burton on the offensive side. You know, you have a receiver who came to Alabama after you know Georgia won the national after they so-called beat us in the national championship and he got a lot of heat for that I mean those you know people online it was just a lot of talk about that and last year we didn't really see a whole lot from Burton but we knew that it was there and I think this year he's shown up pretty consistently so I would say Jermaine Burton and uh, Justin Boygby Duh. man that, uh, Boygby that's a good one that's a really good one especially with how he when he went down last year I think a lot of people forget what an elite level he was playing at. And coming back this year, he's making money, which is what you love to see, right? If you're a fan of Alabama, if one of these young guys go down with injury, that's that's the worst. But seeing them come back, just hit the ground running like he did, it's been awesome. I'm going to go Riker, right? And oh. uh, listen, the reason I'm going Will is because I thought, and this might be a hot take, I thought in the fourth quarter they should have put him in at running back, slot wide receiver. I mean, get any any way you can to get him the ball so he can get that that record. I'm throwing him 50-yard fades. I'm putting him on <laughs> kick return. I'm making my man go out there like the Caucasian persuasion, making some stuff happen. But that just didn't happen. So 
that's neither here nor there. He's still the best kicker in the country. So. <laughs> I don't know how I'll follow that. I mean, Amen. That, that Amen. Just, that was beautiful. <laughs> the truth right there, Ty. <laughs> Can't help it. For me, 1A, 1B, Jason McClellan, Rodell Williams, seniors of the day on the offense and defense. I'm going to go with Malachi Moore. All right, y'all. It's time to close up shop. Before we do that, and enjoy the rest of the day of football. I'm going to let everybody go around the room, pop what they got. If you got a show, it's time to tell the folks in the audience, especially those who are new about that show, where they can find it, the time and all that good stuff. Let's start out with Ty, then go to Cishi, Lushan, Chris Owens, and Chris James. We'll finish it all up. Yeah, so you can find me here every Tuesday, right? It's it's a second home for me. If I'm not here, though, you can find me in a variety of different places. Basically, Monday through Friday, catch me over on Around the Table Sports. We just passed 20,000 subscribers over there, which been a long time coming, but happy about that. On Fridays, I have a national show on Bleacher Report with three other guys. It's a college football pick em show, and we are in the lead right now, sitting right now at 83 games picked correct. 21 wow. games picked incorrect, and I'm not looking back. I want that trophy. Then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, you can also find me on Bleacher Report breaking down Alabama, especially after those playoff rankings come out. You can probably find me complaining on Bleacher Report, and boy, do I complain with the best of them. So I'd love to have you over there. <laughs> Ty, when do you sleep? I don't. Yeah. No, that's that's <laughs> that's that's the problem. That's why I'm 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 always jittery and why yeah, it's it's an issue. <laughs> got it see she yeah so you all can catch me every wednesday night at uh 6 p.m uh, central time 7 p.m eastern right here on the bama standard we have a new show called the crimson dynasty it just started this season right before the season actually started so it's been a hit uh we've had some great guests we actually had chris owens on on a, this week actually our previous episode so uh it was really good commentary we like to break down the upcoming opponents so this one is going to be really good because i i'm look this whole Auburn thing, we're just gonna have to crush it. And, you know, we're going to really dive deep into Auburn and then maybe look a little forward to uh, Georgia, but you can definitely catch me there every Wednesday night. And then you can find me on social media, uh, primarily Instagram at beauty underscore of underscore intelligence. Um, and that's pretty much, you know, the only place that I'm actually active. So thanks for tuning in. Uh, be sure to join us on the Crimson Dynasty. We want more and more viewers because we're, you know, we have that same sentiment as Ty as far as the playoff committee. And I like to go on my own rants but it's all facts you know we're all saying the same thing so hopefully they're listening if uh if they if they mess us over one more time are you down to storm the playoff committee's office i'm 100 <laughs> down just, i got the vikings the helmet just like that dude uh on january i got the viking helmet i can, we can <laughs> make the whole thing if, if, they, if, they, if they do it after auburn then i'm down aren't they in hey, Grayville, hey. texas aren't they here uh, oh whoa 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 here i'm in denton so I'm yeah, it's a, my I'm man, Frisco. it's a hop, skip, and a jump. I love the hat. Yeah, it's a hey. hop, skip, and a jump for me. We're, 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 yeah, no, we're storming it. Yeah, I'm a plane right down. away. I'm just, I'm a plane uh, right just away. an hour away. <laughs> Here's this giant wooden horse for you, playoff committee. There's surely nothing inside of it. <laughs> <laughs> Bunch of I can see y'all. <laughs> Rolling up to that back door of the playoff committee's uh, dwelling like uh, DX did on that tank so many years ago in WWE. <laughs> well, I, I, I would just go into the front office and be like, get your hand out of my pocket. <laughs> <laughs> the question is, Ty, would you be Triple H or would you be Shawn Michaels? <laughs> Listen, we're just going to kick open the door and see what happens after that. <laughs> Throw a couple of Smokies in there and see what happens. Listen here, Blaze doesn't have to be anybody <laughs> else but Blaze. I'm storming this as me. One of one. Blake, right? You Blake, rip that panini pack open. It's a one of one. <laughs> Ain't no Blake, Chris Michaels. It's a Blaze Hayes show, damn it. Hey, Blaze, Blaze, Blaze might get hit with the NCAA infraction. They're going to throw out infractions. That's their weapon. Blaze been hit with NCAA infractions. <laughs> Blaze has no uh, <laughs> a relationship with Alabama. As you can see, he wears no colors. Blaze is his own guy. So we're good. Blaze holds we're, no allegiances. We're gonna go in there, cammied up and camoed out. We're gonna take care of Blaze. Blaze is a renegade. 
I just need the face paint right now. Blaze, Luke, Luke Kiffin's in route with a, he- a helo, and we're going to take care of business. <laughs> All right, Lucian, tell the people where they can find you. Oh, you got guys. Stuff. You know, uh, you can find me on uh, – right now you can find me on Tuesday night uh, on the final whistle with uh, Mr. Ty Hayes and uh, Chris James, the, the star of the show. I'll say the star of the show because that's my guy and Matt Cadell. <laughs> You took over, though. You took over. No, 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 no. Hey, don't let don't let Dan the Godfather hear you that say that. Hey, hey, I'm I'm giving Dan his flowers. Everybody got to interrupt me and stuff. And, and and the actual icon of, of the actual flick, Mr. Dan James. But uh, I also have a uh, something coming in the works in the next couple weeks. Uh, it's going to be on Thursday nights. We haven't ironed out all the details yet, but there's going to be some people from this panel. I'm not going to say who, but they're going to be joining me. And it's going to be a, I'm going to say an in-depth, depth look at Crimson Tide football. I'm going to, well, we're going to bring a little aspect that hasn't been touched on before. But you can find me on uh, Twitter at Rolush21, also uh, Lucian on Facebook and Instagram. Don Parker, $5 at Bama Beach, the barn and UGA and don't get in. We riot four horsemen style too. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> Chris Owens. Um, yeah, I, I agree. I yeah, I, I'd be upset. Um, as for where you can find me, I'm pretty much on MySpace AOL at BG Chris Owens, and um, yeah, I'll be here at home watching football all day. Did you say my, you're on MySpace? You say MySpace? <laughs> yeah, MySpace and AOL. Well, I heard the dial up. I was wondering why was dial up internet. <laughs> Hey, there's yeah, some exactly. people watching this show that don't know what that is, Chris Owens. They're they're not stupid <laughs> enough to know what a MySpace is in, in a in a in a profile song. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, <laughs> they don't know about that top friends list. No, they don't know about that top five at all. The top five friends list. <laughs> what was your profile song, Sishi? Uh, I don't remember. That's a good question. <laughs> Destiny Child. Know. <laughs> no, I, I would no. It would, no, that it would have been probably something ratchet at that time. Uh, <laughs> See how quick she did that now. She said no. Hey, I'm so just little being honest. Like, <laughs> it would have like been something kid? extremely ratchet, like maybe like a some young Jeezy or like <laughs> three six months. Yeah. Yeah. Hold up, hold up. It was, you ain't oh, gotta like apologize. Apple bottom. Or throw it up or something. Yeah. <laughs> No, you know what? It would have been a song that we used to play in our stadium when the players used to come out there ready to fight. And I've even been told that the music has changed lately, too. So they need to get that together because that definitely makes an impact. You got to have some Pastor Troy. You got to. I don't, I don't right? know. They, they played John Cena's theme song in the stadium today. So <laughs> it made a difference. It did. It did. Chris James. How can um, they find you, sir? You can find me on um on MySpace. I'm just joking. <laughs> <Can you find me? laughs> I was about to actually get upset. <laughs> I was like, about literally. to be like, what the hell are we doing here, guys? <laughs> <laughs> Let's bring this into the 21st century. <laughs> you you can find me on here every Tuesday night. With uh with Justin and, and Lucian, Chris, we got to get you back on. CC, we got to get you on there. We and Ty and um and, and Matt, Dan, Coach Smook, um the crew. Um man, we have a good time on Tuesday nights. Um, you, uh, my Facebook is Chris K James Senior. My Twitter is um at Coach Chris James. My Instagram is CKJ Senior Thirty Two. Um and like I said, just check us out on Tuesday nights at 9 p.m. Central. I mean, 9 p.m. Eastern, 8 p.m. Central um, as we, you know, get ready for the Iron Bowl. Um, matter of fact, CC, Chris, any of you guys going to be available Tuesday night? Let me put you on the spot. Put the cold under your feet. Possibly. <laughs> That's how we do it. <laughs> going to be there? Yeah, going to be there, CC? <laughs> possibly. Possibly. Always a good answer. Man. Leave yourself an out. I'm questionable. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Leave yourself an out. Question. Yeah. Hey, um, Willie Beeman is joining the fun. I remember dialing up AOL on the modem in fifth grade, and Vince Young was my profile cover page on MySpace in college. 
Hey, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then Mr. No. Yelder One's got five dollars. No, I review. <laughs> they don't know about Tom from MySpace. See, she Sean. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> bust it, baby. Oh my goodness. Why would you say that? You're gross. I definitely wouldn't have had that on my um on my page. <laughs> bust it, baby. Why would I, <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought I was sitting there. mine was Usher Confessions on my space. <laughs> that makes too much sense, actually. Yeah, it no, that really checks does. out. Which, Which one? Usher confessions or bust it, baby? No, no, confessions for him. For him. Listen, I mean, uh, okay. I mean, Usher I'm, messed I'm, up the game for everybody. That's all I'm gonna say. He he just he messed up the game for a whole entire millennium of men. Just <laughs> if I did something, this is how I would do it. It's like, man, are you but that's man, yeah. Don Parker, why you gotta bring up old stuff? I, wow. <laughs> Justin, you got a black planet? <laughs> <laughs> Justin, you got a black time out. Time out. <laughs> I had on a college club. Y'all remember college club? I'm old. Am I telling my age? Just nothing. I'm telling my age. I, th I think you really are, sir. You, you came out. Justin, had, Justin, you had a black planet? Why y'all bring up old stuff, man? <laughs> I'm just like, I'm curious. I'm curious. Nah, Justin, Justin sounds yeah. like he would be the one to have a pause, bust it, baby. <laughs> bust it. Yeah. Baby. Oh my yeah. God. Then you then you go to CC's MySpace page. My neck, my back. Oh, my <laughs> oh goodness. <laughs> oh my hey, god. You, if you're gonna do that, I'm gonna come at you too. <laughs> oh. Hey, time out. Hey, time out, Justin <laughs> Riley Timberlake. Oh that this was probably is. like the epitome of ratchet, I think. <laughs> oh, you heard me, uh, Lucian. Just, just had a uh, station Bennett fade. Oh no, he did. Hey, his profile hey, picture. Can you no, do me man, a I had, I, I had the the, the Corey we, we uh, from of Justin. We need a picture of Justin in college. I I I need a visual. The boy meets world. The core from boy, I was boy, I was Corey Matthews. In, in flesh. Oh. Minus Topanga. Didn't have the Topanga. I was going to say, oh, did you have Topanga too? Because Didn't have that, man. I would have fell out of college. <laughs> hey, I, I, think, I, I bet you just had the Afro man. <laughs> I did. Uh, I need, I need, we need pictures. We, 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 we need to display well, it. We'll save that for next week's uh, lineup of shows. I want to remind everybody, we got a full week for you, especially with Iron Bowl. we got a lot of big plans we can't really reveal yet, especially with good guests, guests from both sides, actually. So you'll get a chance to witness Alabama and Auburn players on the network next week. So tune in Tuesday night, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern for the Bama Standard. And then, as these guys mentioned, 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. Eastern, the final whistle will be full effect where you get to hear where you can find these people's only fans. Then, Wednesday night, we bring the realest of Bama Nation out, the Crimson Dynasty, 6 p.m. Central, 7 p.m. Eastern, with our very own Sishi here. And then, if you wait just a little bit afterwards, you can catch George Teague on Teague's Take at 8.15 p.m. Central, 9.50 p.m. Eastern, and then Friday night we'll have the simulation with Coach Smook and Lushan is one of one of his coordinators. I think he's actually going to try to take over the head coach's office. I've heard rumblings, but and then on Saturday we'll be back right after the Iron Bowl to tell you what we thought about the game. And one last thing, Mister Yelder, two dollars. Popular songs for girls was "Poppin'" by Chris Brown. All right, well, that one. You never heard that song. I definitely have. I just don't remember it off the top Holy of my head. Pappy. Hey. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> well, you, 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 know that song, you, you 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 got to know how to you got to know how to poke and prod so that you get the response you want, right? And look look what say. I got. I was gonna say, bro, you <laughs> opened the <laughs> gates. You opened the gates, Ty. And on that Always. note, while we still have That's dignity, <laughs> exactly, I love Chris. That. That's great. While we still have dignity, <laughs> that'll do it for us. Roll Tide. Roll Tide, y'all. Roll, Roll Tide, tide y'all. <laughs>